In the previous video, we focused in on dissolving solids in a liquid. I want to take a little time talking about dissolving a gas in a liquid. And if you've opened a can of soda or a bottle of soda, you have some experience with this. You may have noticed that when you open a cold bottle of soda, it doesn't fizz as much as opening a warm bottle of soda. This is because the solubility of a gas is different than the solubility of a solid. For a solid, we said the warmer the solvent, the more solid you can dissolve, generally speaking. For a gas, it's just the opposite. The warmer of the solvent, the less gas you can dissolve. And it should make sense. The warmer the solvent, the more excited the gas particles will be, and the easier it will be for them to escape and turn into a gas. So the behavior of dissolving a solid in water versus solving a gas in water is just the opposite. The colder a liquid, the more gas you can dissolve in it. And marine scientists will also know this. If you look at how clear the water is in the Caribbean, versus how clear the water is here up in Buzzards Bay, you'll notice a stark difference. Marine scientists measure something called turbidity, or how cloudy or opaque water is. The water here in Buzzards Bay is particularly turbid. It's not very clear at all. Whereas in the Caribbean or places like the Mediterranean, the water is really, really clear. Now some people might think that's a sign of pollution, but really it's a sign of life. There is much more life living in Buzzards Bay than there is in the Caribbean. The reason is because the water is so cold, you can dissolve more oxygen in the water in Buzzards Bay than you can in the Caribbean. So the oxygen-rich waters of Buzzards Bay can support more life, more microbiology, things like krill and plankton and things like that. The Caribbean and the Mediterranean are actually relatively deserts. The water is so clear there is because there's nothing living in it. And this might seem strange to you because when you think of ocean life and biodiversity, you might think of coral reefs. And that's true. Coral reefs have tremendous biodiversity and a tremendous amount of life. But the reason is, is that waves breaking over the reefs can mix in oxygen and actually get the oxygen in that way. But away from the reefs and away from breaking waves, there's just not a whole lot of oxygen in warm water. So it can't support that much life. This is why whales, the largest animals to ever live on Earth, go to feed in the Arctic and Antarctic oceans because the water is so cold that there's enough food to actually feed those animals. As we said before, the colder the solvent, generally speaking, the more gas you can dissolve. This is why whales feed in the Arctic, and this is why a cold can of soda won't fizz as much as a warm can of soda. Pressure is also a consideration. If you increase the pressure around a solution, you can dissolve more gas into it. This is exactly how a carbonated beverage works. They pressurize the beverage with carbon dioxide and seal the container, and all of the carbon dioxide stays dissolved in solution. Once you release the pressure by opening the container, the gas will now come out of solution, or bubble out, or effervesce is the term that scientists will sometimes use, and you will decrease the solubility of the carbon dioxide by lowering the pressure in the solution. And again, with our discussion about gases and kinetic molecular theory, hopefully this makes sense. By increasing the pressure, you're cramming the gas particles closer and closer together, and you can force more and more into the solution. Once you decrease the pressure, the gas particles are free to do what they will, and more and more of them go off and become a gas. So, we said the colder the solution, the more gas you can dissolve, and the higher the pressure in the solution, the more gas you can dissolve. This last statement is something referred to as Henry's Law.